Hello and welcome. In this video we're going to look at developing a graphical user interface for our applications using Swing. Graphical user interface is a type of user interface where information and actions are presented to a user through graphical icons. This allows the user to interact with devices using images rather than text commands. So it's a move away from the command prompt which we might be use, used to in some of our previous programs. The Java Foundation classes, or the JFC, are a graphical framework for building portable Java-based graphical user interfaces, or GUIs, or GUIs. So we'll call them GUIs from here on out. The JFC consists of three main packages, Swing, Abstract Window Toolkit, and Java 2D. Swing is the one we're going to focus on today. It's the primary Java GUI widget toolkit, written entirely in Java, not implemented by platform-specific code. The package it's, it's all contained in is javax.swing. Again, we will look at Abstract Window Toolkit in a later video, but we won't be looking at that today. In the past, you may have created simple pop-up boxes to enter and display details using JOption Pane. And when you use that, you would have imported the javax.swing package. So we would have had jOptionPane.show input dialog and jOptionPane.show message dialog, which just put little pop-up windows on the screen that were predefined and pre-designed for us to use. And here's an example of how that would have worked. So this is a My First GUI app where we have a string for name and we have jOptionPane.show input dialog and jOptionPane.show message dialog. This is basic GUI development, and in this video we're going to develop this further and design our own graphical user interfaces. And the best way to do that is by example. So if we cast our minds back to the assessment example that we've looked at in previous videos, where we were asked to develop an application that allows the lecturer to create different modes of assessment for their modules. If we take a look at the problem description again, it says that all assessments should have a name, a type, and a weighting. And so what we'll do now is we'll just develop a basic GUI that allows a user to enter a name, a type, a weighting, and add that to an object, an array of objects. We won't worry about what it's going to do. We're not going to put code behind the buttons today, but we will incorporate a button that we can build on later on. So we'll open up NetBeans, and we need a new NetBeans project. It's a Java application. We'll call it GUI from scratch application. Okay, make sure that it's stored in the folder where you want it. Okay. I'll just call this basic GUI application. It's not like in that name at all. Okay, and then for my app class, I'm going to call this assessment app. Okay, as always. Now, so that's... That generates a main class for me called assessment app and I'm going to want to add a new class now where I can create my GUI. So a new Java class and we'll call this one assessment GUI and I'm putting GUI there so that I know at first glance this is the class with all my interface stuff in it. Okay, the first thing that we have to think about is that we're going to use Swing. So let's import java x dot swing now we don't know which parts of the package we're going to use yet so let's put in dot star okay now netbeans will often give us a warning when we do this if we put in the dot star because we're importing all of the swing package when we don't necessarily need to there'll be parts of it that we don't use but we can tidy that up a little bit later on the first thing you need to consider if we take a look at our picture of what i think our gui should look like we have this main con content window, okay? And that's known as a JFrame. JFrame is a class that's developed as part of the Swing package, and it's in essence a super class. And what we're going to do now is we're going to develop a subclass of that. And our subclass then is Assessment GUI. And because it's a subclass, we should extend JFrame. Okay? extends JFrame. There we go. Okay. And then if we take another look at our picture, all right, this white panel in here is known as a J panel. And so when we develop 
a user interface we first off have our JFrame and within that then we can contain things again in another container so in this instance we'll use a J panel and we need to declare an instance of J panel J panel again is a class that's part of the swing package so private J panel P and again we can call it whatever we want so this is our declare object section okay taking another look at our picture now we have this assessment application that's like a title it's not appearing to be in a box but in fact it is it's known as a J label so anything that we want to appear like this that the user can't type into or change is going to be a J label so let's say private J label title and I'm just going to end it with LBL so I know that it's a label okay we're going to have further labels then for assessment name, assessment type, and assessment weighting. So private J label name LBL, private J label type, um, type LBL, and private J label weighting LBL. Okay, and you'll see the reason really that I've labeled all of those with an LBL at the end is because now I have to go and create these. And these boxes here are known as J text fields. So again, similarly, I'll end the names of these with a TF. And it's very important to name each of your labels appropriately so that you know what kind of data it's going to store, what it's going to refer to. Calling it label one, label two, and label three is not going to help you when it comes to further programming. So private j text field and this is going to be name tf private j text field type tf private j text field waiting tf so name type and waiting Okay, and then finally, the last object that we want on the screen here is our add assessment button. So that's known as a J button. Private J button add BTN. Again, we'll end it with a BTN so that we know at first glance this is a button. Okay, the next step is to create all of those. So that's just declaring our objects and in our GUI class, all of our object creations should happen in our constructor. So we need a constructor, public assessment GUI. And inside here then, we're going to create all of our objects. But before we do that, we need to decide on how big we want our J frame to be. So this outer frame, how, what size do we want that to be? And when it appears on the screen, where do we want it to appear in relation to the top left hand corner of the screen okay and so to do that we say let's just put a comment in here set size and location of the J frame so set size 500 500 we can adjust it later if it's the wrong size and set location 10 10. Now what this means is what size do we want it across and what size do we want it down? So X axis and Y axis. And then how far across on the screen does it come before it starts drawing the J frame? And how far down the screen do you come before it's drawing the J frame? And that's relative to the top left hand corner of the screen. Now we need to get, I mentioned earlier, we have this white panel that all of the objects are going to be part of. So we need to create the panel. So J equals new, no, it wasn't J, it was P. P equals new J panel. And there's no parameters needed in the creation of that. Then we need to set the panel layout now the panel has well there are many layouts available to us 
in swing and you'll see that as we go along in this instance we're not going to use a particular layout we are going to set exactly where on the screen we want the buttons and labels to be but it is possible to use default layouts that are set up for us already but we'll look at that in a later video p dot set layout null so null just represents that we're not using a particular layout then we need another thing we can do is set the background color of the panel and I have set it to white so p dot set background and in the brackets color dot white okay and it gives you the options there that we can use color dot blue cyan dark gray gray let's try no let's try white okay color dot white so now our panel is going to be white the last thing we need to do we've created our panel we know what layout it's using what color it's going to be but we have to add the panel to the J frame okay and to do that we say add P alright and that will just add P to our J frame because we're in our J frame so we don't need to make a reference to the J frame here because we're we're technically in our instance of J frame okay now next thing to do is create our objects okay so title LBL equals new J label and in here we put the text that we want to appear in this particular label assessment label then we do name LBL equals new J label and assessment name. And that should be in quotation marks. Okay, so these parameters go in quotation marks. And actually, this one up here should say assessment application. I was talking about labels at the time. Then we have type lbl equals new j label and in here assessment type is the text we want and then finally waiting lbl equals new j label waiting so assessment waiting okay that's our labels created, but we now need to create our text fields. So name TF equals new J text field. We don't need anything in the brackets because I want that box to start out empty. Type TF equals new J text field. Um, waiting TF equals new J text field and then finally our button add btn equals new j button and again we want the button to say add assessment okay and that's all of our objects created the next step is to set the bounds of the objects okay now the thing about this is this is we're setting the size and the location of each object individually so where do we want each item to appear on screen in relation to the top left hand corner of the panel so how many pixels across and down do we want to go before we start to draw the assessment application label and then how wide do we want that to be and how deep do we want it to be okay a lot of this is trial and error to start with. So it's X, Y, width, and height is the order the parameters go in, okay? What, num what value on the X axis, what value on the Y axis, what is the width of the actual label, and what's the height of the label, okay? So we'll start with title LBL dot set bounds. I've prepared some bounds earlier, so we're gonna go 10, 10, 200, 30 and you'll see the effects of changing these if you take time to play around with it later name lbl dot set bounds 10 
50. Now I'm going down 50 this time because I came down 10 the first time. I then had a label that was 30 in height. So 30 and 10 is 40. And I want a space then before I start my next one. So I'm going 50, okay? And then it's going to be 200 by 30 again. Then we have the type label, type LBL dot set bounds. And this one's going to be 10, 100, 230. Okay, now I don't know why that's gone to scroll divisible on me. Set bounds, okay. And then waiting lbl.setBounds and we have 10, 150, 230. So you'll see I've kept my 10 consistent because I want each of these things to appear directly under each other. So they're all in the same distance from the side, okay? And I'm increasing, I'm keeping the size the same for each one, but I'm increasing the height every time or the the Y value every time because I want it to move down the screen. Okay. Then I do my text fields. So name TF dot set bounds. Now on this one, I want it to be next to the appropriate label. Okay. And so the bounds on this one are going to be 230 across, 50 down, 200 width and 30 height. Then I have type tf dot set bounds 230 across. This one's going to be 100 down, 200 width and 30 height. And then the weighting tf dot set bounds will be 230 across, 150 down, 200 wide and 30 height. Okay. And then finally add button dot set bounds. This one's going to be 10 out, 200 down, 150 wide and 30 height. Okay. Once we've declared and created and set the bounds of all of our objects, we need to add all of our objects to the panel. So we added our panel to the J-frame and now into that panel, we want to put all of the objects, okay? If you leave this step out, you'll find you're getting no errors, but nothing appears on the screen for you. So if we do P dot add, so we're adding to the panel, P is the name of our panel dot add title LBL. P dot add name lbl p dot add type lbl p dot add waiting lbl p dot add name tf p dot add type tf P dot add waiting TF and then finally P dot add add BTN. Okay, so that's our add button has been added to our panel. That's all of our objects added to our panel. Our panel is added to our J frame and everything is set up correctly. Now, if we were to hit play now, nothing would happen because in our assessment app, we haven't done anything yet. So in here, we need to create an instance of our GUI and then tell Java to make it visible on the screen. So assessment, GUI, my GUI equals new assessment GUI. Same as we declare and create any object my GUI dot set visible to true. Okay. And this tells Java to make my instance of assessment GUI 
visible on the screen. So let's take a look and see did that work. If we play, there we have it. That's our J frame now with each of our labels and our text fields ready to go and our button, but obviously our button doesn't do anything at present. So that's how you declare and create different objects from the swing package, add them to your panel and onto your J frame. Um, at present, they don't do anything. We'll look at that in event handling, but for now we're just looking at getting everything set up. Again, there are other layouts, there are other ways to do things. This is just one of them. So I hope that this has helped.